Amen. The children's church can be dismissed. Man, what a worship service. Amen. I love getting in the presence of God. How many are you glad to be in the house of God this morning? I'm glad to be in the house of God this morning. And just sitting down and, and just thinking about the whole, you know, I was doing some reflection there in worship and where God has brought me from. I remember uh, the whole reason why my family started coming to this church is uh, I got kicked out of a youth group uh, in the church that we were going. And my mom was kind of disappointed that they kicked me out of the youth group because you know, it's not that I, 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 I knew, had God in my life back then, but I was working out my salvation. And, you know, I was a young man, and I got beside myself, and I did something I shouldn't have done, and they kicked me out. My mom was disappointed, and she said, you know, I'm going to start my own youth group. And at the time, uh, you know, it, it wasn't too common, you know, for people to start youth groups out of their home, and that youth group blew up. It got so big out of their home that she felt like, oh, man, we need to find a church to put this under, you know. And during that time, she found El Shaddai Ministries. At the time, was Second Chance and Pastor Mike. And I sat down with Pastor Mike. We went to his home, and I was young, struggling in my relationship with God. And he sat down, and he started telling me all these things about my life. And I, at that moment, I was like, I need to go to this man's church. I mean, I'm glad that we're here. And it started a whole new process with my walk with God because at that time on, he was preaching to a level that I could understand as a 15-year-old young man. And it was through a process and a period of time that the transformation took place to who I am today. You see what I'm saying? Uh, it was, today's message is entitled Transformation. Because a lot of us started the transformation, but a lot of us has checked out of the process in the meantime. See, and, and the thing was, is I was like thinking, what am I going to talk about on Sunday? And, you know, you're going back and forth. The Holy Spirit was ministering to me. And then the children's church came up here last Sunday, and they said their new name for children's church was going to be Transformers. And a young man said, hey, why are we going to be called transformers? Because we need to be transformed into the image of God. And I'm going to tell you what, that was a confirmation. And then I was thinking about it. I said that there's hundreds, maybe hundreds of thousands of people gathered today in churches all over the world. And how many of them are pursuing the transformation to be in the image of God? See, they're coming to church. They're singing songs, but how many have truly submitted to the transformation in their life? If it wasn't for me trans submitting to the transformation in my life, I would not be up here today. This is no glory to me, though. It's all glory to God. All I had to do was submit. See, God used a donkey, so you can't brag off him using you. You see what I'm saying? You have to submit to the transformation that God is doing in your life. As a believer, we should be a reflection of who God is. Just coming to church simply doesn't do it. There's a lot of churches God doesn't even go to. Because there's people gathered, but the Holy Spirit is void. See, if you came into this church this morning, you felt the Holy Spirit. We have to be willing to see and admit, this is the hard part, that we need a change. See, coming to God, I did not know my heart. I didn't know the evil that lied within I was just trying to enjoy life. 
I didn't understand the disappointment I had already had discovered at 15 years old. I didn't understand the anger issues that was going on inside of me at 15 years old. So I worked them out the best that I could. So I found exception in, in, in guys who accepted me. You see what I'm saying? I was, I was trying to follow and, and get this place in life that I was told I could get to. And so I started smoking weed because it made me feel good. I started drinking at a young age because my dad said it was okay. You see what I'm saying? So I'm working out these eternal issues that all of us have because, let me tell you something, you were created by God. And through that process of creation, he put a desire in you to have a relationship with him. And until you pursue that a relationship with him, you have a void in your life. So what do we do? Naturally, we try to fill that void with anything and everything until we come smack face to face with the living God. And see, that's what happened to me in my transformation. And I said, man, I got to have more of that. Give me some of that because that was better than any weed I ever smoked. That was better than malt liquor. <laughs> Serious. My world got turned upside down. I was looking at my wife up here singing to God. I remember meeting my wife. She had a cigarette in one hand, a bottle of wine, and a phone in her ear. She had three arms, and I didn't even know where they came from. She, bam, doing them all three. Now she's up here worshiping the Lord, the King of Kings. Why? Because of the transformation process that she submitted to in her life. She didn't know it. But when I met her, I said, you're going to be my wife. She said, you crazy. I said, look, I might be crazy, but I know the voice of God when I hear it. And when the Isley brothers went on in my head, when I seen you walk into church talking about who's that lady, I said, that's my wife. A year later, that was my wife. See, a lot of people say it's crazy and things are just circumstance. But when you serve an almighty God, he'll make a way when there's no... And you know what the precious thing about it? He said, he'll give you the desires of your heart. How many of us are living with the desires of our hearts? If you're not, you're selling yourself short because you're not submitting to the transformation God has called you to. Too many people in the church are playing church and they're not submitting to an almighty God. Why? Because the church is not but a fraction of what it needs to be. We should be impacting our communities. We should be impacting our schools. Our children should be wanting to know about the God that we serve. How come they ain't asking? Because you ain't serving him right. Transformation. My son asked me this morning, Pop, you nervous? I said, man, it's like going to a basketball game. It's like a wrestling match. Yeah, you got the butterflies, but you know what you've been called to do in this life. See, I've been told since I was a little boy, boy, you're going to minister the word of God. I fought it. I kicked away from it every chance that I got. But as soon as I submitted to God, he turned my life upside down. And I submitted to the transformation. Was it easy? No. No, it wasn't easy. It was painful sometimes. It's like a kid or anybody that puts their hand in a fire, what are you going to do if your hand goes into a fire? You're going to pull it out. Why? Because it's going to hurt. See, this transformation process, sometimes it hurts. Sometimes it's downright painful because it's uncomfortable. It's the opposite of what you've been born or raised to think and do. So naturally, many of us begin this process, and the first thing we do at the sign of hurt is take off running. Yeah, we still come to church. But how many of us are actually submitting to the process of transformation in their life? So it gets painful. It gets rough. But it's something you have to pursue anyways. Come on. You guys ever watch lions on TV? See, I watch lions. I, I, I'm intrigued by lions. I love everything about lions. I love that the men don't hunt. They kick back. What are they doing? Protected. So when I'm on my couch, I tell my wife, I'm protected. I ain't not doing nothing. 
But if somebody comes out them door, comes through that door, I'm about to hit them. I'm protected. Don't get on me about not doing nothing. But when the lions hunt, the weak go in the back. Only the strong ones go in the front. See, I want to surround myself with strong believers that are going to help me in my transformation with God. Turn your Bibles to Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Romans chapter 12, verse 2 says, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. By the testing, you may discern what is the will of God and what is good and acceptable and perfect. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. The renewal of your mind through the word of God. See, the pastor, the minister, the apostle, the evangelist can only help you get so far. The word of God will let you know the character of God. And the more you study and get into the word yourself, the more of God can reveal of himself to you. See, it's not the pastor's fault. It's not the minister's fault. It's not the evangelist's fault that men and women are not submitting to this transformation. It is your responsibility Some people make a mistake and call me pastor. I'm not a pastor. I'm not a shepherd. I'm a minister. I minister the word of God. That's my job. The pastor's job is to look over the sheep. So we have a pastor. We have a minister. If they're doing their job, the congregation has to do their job and receive it. Accept it. And submit to it. Not the pastor, not the evangelist, but the word of God. See, when you come up here and you teach or you minister, you're not ministering out of your own spirit. You're ministering out of the spirit of God. This is what God has spoke to me. Turn your Bibles to 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. You guys with me? Don't get tired on me. It always starts off on fire. By the end, you guys got to stay awake all the way through. <laughs> Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. So all of us who have had the veil removed can see and reflect the glory of the Lord. The veil has been removed. So you can see and reflect the glory of the Lord. And the Lord who is the spirit makes us more and more like him as we are changed into his glorious image. This transformation process, it's a painful process, which normally many of us give up on. Sometimes it's the cause of somebody else, somebody who we looked up to as a believer that we got let down. You were looking at the wrong person in the first place. There ain't nobody can do you like my Jesus can do you. Men are going to let you down. But don't allow them to help you or allow them to make you get off of the lane that you're supposed to be going down. You have to keep your eyes on God. See, we get up here and we say it's not a religion. This is a relationship. It is. No doubt it's a relationship. And when you have a relationship with an almighty God, ain't no man ever going to let you down enough to make you persuade from your walk with him. See, most of us come in the church and we hear two main principles. It is to read your word to build your faith, which is true. These are true principles and come to church and do not forsake the gathering of the brethren. And most of us leave it right there, though. These are the two things that we do, and then we give up. And then we wonder why 
nothing more is happening in our lives. Although these principles are very true, they're not enough for most to continue with the transformation that God is doing in your life. So my point number one is going to be, which helped me, again, my points, they helped me get to where I'm at today. Okay? They helped me. So hopefully it will help you. Or help, hopefully it will help you see something about yourself that can help you pursue your walk with God. You, you see what I'm saying? You guys still with me? All right. I'm not going to shout the whole time. <laughs> Surround yourself with people that challenge you. Too many of us get saved and we still hang out with the old stinking thinking people that we used to hang out with. And then we wonder why ain't nothing changing in our lives. <laughs> Come on, but they're my friend. I'm sorry. I'm going to give up anybody that gets in my way with, the walk with my walk with God. You ain't that important in my life. And I'm not talking out of the side of my neck. I, I sacrificed a relationship with my father so I could pursue this walk. See, some of us, some nandy-pandy little sissy pants, want, want to please everybody. But I'm going to tell you something. You can't please everybody all the time. So I had to give up some stuff that was uncomfortable. And my relationship with some of those people was, was something I had to give up because I seen that I was not making a change in their life. They were having an influence over me and my walk with God, so I had to give that relationship up. And don't deceive yourself and think that person isn't sitting right next to you in this church sometimes. Because if they're sitting in here and they don't want nothing to do with God, they ain't going to help you. They're not going to help you. How do you, how do you see, how do you tell people that, that are not going to be a benefit of you? Listen to what they speak about. Are they constantly complaining? God ain't, ain't working in their life. I'm, these are just things that I've observed. If they're constantly judging people, criticizing, and put their opinion over God, they're not pursuing their relationship with him. It's funny, you come in the church and people put their opinions above God's. Right. Your opinion does not mean that much. Turn your Bibles to Matthew chapter 15. So who, you, who, who are you surrounding yourself with? Who, who are you constantly in fellowship with? Is it somebody that challenges you? Somebody that pushes you to be a better man, to be a better woman? Is it somebody that, that lifts up your spirits? Come on. I've seen so many people's dreams get, get crushed in the house of God. Why? Because they share their dreams with you, and you say, that ain't going to happen. Thank you, man of faith. Thank you for believing in the spirit in me. And so what we do is we sit down with our hands under our butts on the pews and say, I guess God doesn't want to do anything else with me. So put yourself around people that are going to challenge you, that believe in what we talk about, that believe in the change, that believes that there could be a Billy Graham sitting in the audience here somewhere. Come on. That believes that healing and restoration. See, I, I've been in some situations in my life where I was let down by all these believers because here I was standing and proclaiming a healing and restoration in my life, and they're like, I don't know. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Are you reading the same Bible I'm reading? Because the one I says, he says his love covers a multitude of sin and that nothing is impossible for him. And I'm telling you right now, God is going to restore this situation in my life. And you're saying, I don't know. I don't know. 
I don't know. For me, I'm like, there's a dough, Jack. You either going to step up your game if you're going to kick it with me. Come on. Or I'm going to wipe the dust off my feet like the Bible says. Kick that dust, little, little extra in there too. Bam. Because I got somewhere to go. Come on. But most of us, oh, but God loves. God does love. And that person is going to find themselves in a path where they can come face to face with God's love once again. And they can make a choice. Okay, I messed up. Now I need to get back to where I used to be. Now I got to get back and get my faith to where it needs to be. But if we all just pretend like, you know, like Rodney King said, can't we all just get along? The point ain't going to get across. Sometimes we got to let some people go. Look what the Bible says, Matthew 15, verse 7. I like this. You pretenders. How many pretenders we got in the house of God? No, no hands went up on that one. So I thought someone would be like, yeah, that's me. You pretenders, you hypocrites. Admirably and truly did Isaiah prophesy of you when he said, These people draw near me with their mouths and honor me with their lips, but their hearts hold off and are far away from me. See, the Bible says what you say, the words that come out of your mouth, right? You guys know where I'm going with this? What? Shows what's inside your heart. You got it? Uselessly. Wow. Wow. Do they worship me? For they teach as doctrines the commands of men. Come on. We don't like submitting to God because it's not easy all the time. So what we do is we make up our own doctrines. We translate the Bible the way we want to interpret it so it feels good for us. Because sometimes we don't, that word is downright uncomfortable. So we, so we follow a doctrine that's easier than the one that's in the word of God. And these people are filling the church pews. They're not serving God the way the Bible teaches us to serve God. They're serving God the way that makes them feel good, that makes them feel accepted. So you cannot compromise the word of God. They, they teach as doctrines, the commands of men. And Jesus called the people to him and said to them, listen and grasp and comprehend this. Is it not what goes into the mouth of man that makes him unclean and defiled? But what comes out of the mouth, this makes a man unclean and defiles him. Then the the disciples came to him and said, do you know that Pharisees were displeased? (laughs) Ha, ha, ha. And often offended and indignant when they heard this saying? Why, were peop- Why do people get mad and angry when the word of God is being preached? Because they don't have a relationship with the God. They serve in a religion. That's what the Pharisees were. They were religious men. They were head knowledge. They weren't serving God with their heart. They were serving God from their mind. And when we serve God from our mind, we don't lift up God, we lift up ourselves. And he answered, every plant which my heavenly father has not planted will be torn up by the roots. Every plant which my heavenly father has not planted will be torn up by the roots. Let them alone. And disregard them. That's not love, Brother Charlie. I'm not saying these things. The Bible's telling you these things. Just because you're comfortable with compromise in your life, don't make me comfortable with compromise in mine. I got clapping in front of the church. He said, let them alone and disregard them. They are the blind guides and teachers. Are you like hanging out with blind people spiritually? If a blind man leads a blind man, both will fall into the ditch. 
but I like them. They're my friend. I met them at church. There's a Christian rap song called The Devil in Disguise. Watch out for the devil that's sitting next to you. Because sooner or later, you both will fall into the ditch. So watch who you hang around with. Check them. See what they're about a little bit. Just because they come to church don't mean they're okay. They might got more problems than you. I don't know about you, but when my wife came to church, she didn't need to surround herself with women who were all smoking cigarettes, drinking wine, going to church. She needed to hang around with people that were going to make her take a step up, challenge her and who she was. I always hung out with older people in my life. I've always been the youngest in my crowd. Why? Because they always constantly make me take a step up. Now I'm 33 years old and 53-year-old men are trying to run after me and say, hey, how did you get what you got? I'm going to tell you how I got what I got. That was through submitting through the transformation that God did in my life. <laughs> 33 years old, riding a hoopty, but it's paid for. That's maturity. Because when I was young, I had, I had the shiny chrome ones. Pretend like I was somebody. But now that I know I'm somebody, I can roll a hoopty and be a somebody in a hoopty. Come on, we go in debt trying to be like the Joneses. This generation is worse than my generation. So materialistic, so caught up on material things. I'm going to get this off the point. But don't end up in a ditch. Turn your Bibles to 2 Peter 3. See, this is the heart of somebody that I want to hang out with right here. See, people think, oh, you hang out with Pastor Mike, you're your you're pastor's pet. He, he has favor over you because you're always with Pastor Mike. I'm always with Pastor Mike because I choose to be with Pastor Mike. I choose to hang out with somebody that's going to tell me the truth. Was it easy all the time? Heck no. I was trying to date my wife. He said, Charlie, it's too early. I said, man. He said, wait six months. I said, how about six weeks? He said, nah, Charlie. But, you know, I'm young. I didn't listen. Started calling Sister Rachel. I'd be like, meet me at Starbucks, girl. <laughs> Rachel was like, okay. <laughs> Let me drop my kids out first. <laughs> Shoot. I pulled up playing Al Green. Pastor Mike, Charlie, what are you doing, man? Pastor, she's going to have a birthday party for her son. Should I go? Nope, you're coming with me to the car show. He made plans for me that day. Remember that, Sister Gloria? I was rolling with y'all. I'm like, dang, man. I snuck over there so quick after I got back from Pastor Mike and see the party was still going on. I'm not telling you these things because it's something I read about. I'm telling you things because this is stuff that I lived. Did I pay the consequences for not listening to that little bit of wisdom my pastor tried to share with me? Yeah, of course I did. Somebody knocked on my door one day and called me the devil. Remember that? <laughs> pay some consequences. Because I didn't use wisdom. But see, I was hanging out with somebody that would share me and told me these things. Was it easy? Nah, it wasn't easy all the time. But now that I'm older and I get it a little bit more, it's, it was worth it. Are you guys are Second Peter chapter 3, yes. verse 17. This is the person I want to hang out. You, therefore, beloved. Hold on, that's not the. I got ahead of myself. Psalms chapter 51. 
Actually, I got behind. I'm going to read this before we read Psalms. You can keep your Bible there, but this is again, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 17. It says, ye, ye therefore, beloved, knowing this beforehand, take care that you are not carried away with the error of lawless people and lose your own stability. See, a lot of us hang out with lawless people and we wonder why things happen in our life. We lose our own stability. But the hardest somebody that I hang, want to hang out with is in Psalms 51 and verse 10. And, and through 12, it says, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore me the joy of your salvation, and uphold me with a willing spirit. How many people are you hanging around with has that willing spirit? that can see and acknowledge when you're resisting and you're fighting God, and they say, oh, that's okay. Or do they say, you know what, you're fighting God. You're, you're being resistant, and you're not wanting to change. You need to change that about yourself. How many of your friends have told you that? I had to submit. One thing that's hard for men is to Submit. I ain't gonna tell, that fool ain't going to tell me what to do. I'm a man. I was in a bad point in my life. You ever been in a situation where you wake up with a bad feeling in your stomach and then you go to bed with that same feeling? Just knots? Brother of mine that I grew up with, he goes, look, you're going to come with me. He goes, and we're going to study the Bible because you're in a situation. I know it, and you know it. And the only one that can get you out of this situation is God, Charlie. He said, so when you come over and hang out with me, we're not going to play video games. We're not going to uh, watch TV, put on BET, Comedy Central. We're not going to do any of those stuff. We're going to get into the Word, or we're going to listen to the Word. Either one, it's going to be the Word. So as a man, I want to be like, Psh, who you think you are? Submitting to that. But then something told me, like, man, you better submit. So turn on the TV, listen to a preacher. Holy Spirit came so strong in the living room that I was in, broke me down, took the knots out of my stomach, delivered me, set me free, got, gave me the power to get out of my situation. Didn't do it for me, gave me the power to do it. Gave me the confidence that I needed. The belief in myself. See, that's what the Spirit of God will do. It will empower you. That's why, you're, you, that's why you can't get out of the situations that you're stuck in. You're not getting into the Spirit of God to where it can empower you. There's too many Christians and unbelievers that are not empowered. That's why we keep struggling. What do you mean? Get into the presence of God. Build your confidence in Him. It's apparent when somebody has that kind of spirit, that willing spirit. It's very apparent. So look for those people, people that encourage you, that build you up, that lift you up. And say, man, you know what? I need to be around that dude right there. And if that dude don't want you in their life, they don't accept you, pass him up. Go to somebody else. They don't accept you, pass them up. Go to somebody else. If nobody else would accept you, say, you know what? Make me be the leader, God. So when somebody's looking how I was looking, let me be the man that they can look to. That's right. That's right. I don't see that happening in the church either. Come on, God created you, wants you to be a leader and not a follower. Yeah, that's right. That's right. We need more leaders in the church. We need more men to say, you know what? Oh, man, there ain't nobody there for me, so I'm going to go to the bar where everybody accepts me. Right. No, then get into your word and be that man that's somebody that can look to you. Yes. Amen. Like I said, Lions surround themselves with the strongest. Why? So they can get, the, they can get their food. That's right. yeah. Some of us are spiritually starving out here. 
Why? Because we're surrounding ourselves with weaker people. We want nothing to do with God. I'm telling you, it's pretty important stuff. No, I'm, sorry. I'm, I'm very animated. I've got to hold myself back. Second point of today's message is do not overlook the fundamentals. Stop. First thing that Pastor Mike ever told me in any study that I ever done, he said, kiss. I said, I ain't kissing you. Not just playing. <laughs> Keep it simple, stupid. I was like, huh? <laughs> I really didn't understand it at that point. I was very simple. He said, keep it simple. Don't make it complicated. And I was like, all right. See, many believers today want to walk before they can even crawl. We want to get into the deep knowledge of God, but we don't even understand the foundation of God. And then we wonder why our foundation is all messed up. Because we try to walk before we can crawl. We don't even have faith to believe God for healing of a headache. And we try to do something impossible in him because we get too fired up. We, oh, man, I'm going to go. What happens if you go to uh, lift weights and you want to be a bodybuilder and you just go in, never step to, in the gym a day, and then you want to go in and pick up a bunch of heavy weight? You're going to hurt yourself. What happens to a baby if you give them food before they can take normal food? They could get their stomach upset. See, a lot of Christians today, we come in, we overlook the fundamentals of Christ. We overlook the fundamental things. We want to get the deep things of God. Why? Because I'm going to tell you, it's that internal struggle in man that we want to know and understand. The Bible says, come and have faith like what? A child. I was watching my children the other day. Guess what happened? They play that game, trust or whatever it is, where they close their eyes and just fall backwards. You know what's funny? The older they get, the less they trust. You get wheezy, she's like, go ahead, Psh, fall right on her back. Lola, she's a little bit more hesitant. Like, oh, I don't know. You get some of my older kids, they won't even, no, I ain't trusting you. See, we get we overlook the fundamentals. These are two fundamentals that I found in God that cover so much of him. The first one is love. I think we as believers need to get a firm understanding because I think a lot of us have a messed up understanding of love because we base it on the love of people. That's why we can't even trust a living God because somebody we loved let us down. Somebody we loved hurt us. And so when we hear the love of God, we, we put those two in the same category. So how can we understand God when we're putting him in the same category as man, as man's love? The Bible speaks of agape love, an unconditional love. Nothing you can do can make God not love you. The Bible says we are the apple of his eye. He loves us. And see, we don't get a firm understanding of what the love of God is. And we try to understand all these other things, but I want to speak in tongues. I want to be baptized. I want this and that. Do you understand love? Because it's the love of God that drew us all here today. It's the love of God that drew me as a young man, Fulfill, trying to fill that void. Turn your Bibles to 1 John chapter 4. Too much hate going on in the Christian church today. Too much segregation. Too much judgment. These are all people that don't understand love. But they're in the pulpits all over the room. 
fill in the pews, don't understand love. 1 John 4, 8 says, anyone who does not love, what? Does not know God because God is love. Are you full of love today? Are you full of unconditional love? Are you full of love that that covers a multitude of sin? Somebody sins against you, you can look at them through the eyes of love because that's the way God looked at you when you sin against him. See, we like to be in judgment. We like to judge people. When they do something wrong, oh, no, they didn't. Get them, smote them with fire, God. Make them pay for the injustices. We're walking in love when we're at the grocery store, waiting in line and somebody, somebody cut you in your line. Come on, we're examples all the time. We should be the image of God at the grocery store line in Starbucks. Somebody flips you off in your car. Don't see, see, that's where people get it wrong. Just because I don't do it today, there was a time where I wanted to cut your head off. That, 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 that was kind of weird. But, <laughs> but I used to get angry. You know what I mean? You guys got to understand the way I was taught as a child. It was very violent. See, and you think, oh, you know, Brother Charlie, he's a loving guy. It was the love of God that changed me. My dad was a very violent person. So he, I grew up hearing these things. Somebody ever messes with you, boy, you better take him in the back and let him have it. You know what I'm saying? Right. And if somebody messes with you real good, then you take their family and you hurt them. Right. So, so they have to think about that for the rest of their life. See, I was raised violently. That's how I grew up. I remember my dad smashed him. Smash the mouse. That wasn't violent, but there was, you know, and I'm like crying. He's like, what are you crying for? Suck it up. It's just a mouse. I'm like, so I, I got trained as I got older. Be violent. This is how you solve issues. I remember having my car, driving my car, my, all my kids in there, some guys yelling at me, flipping me off. And I want, I was like, pull over. And I looked at my kids. I'm like, well, what if he pulls over? I'm going to have to fight this guy. Well, at least I got to teach them that I'm going to be a man of my word. I said I was going to do it, so I got to do it now. That's the way I thought. Now somebody flips me off. It gets me a little aggravated sometimes. Eh, no big deal. Walk in love. Somebody see you get flipped off and you don't react and the person next to them, wow. How about when somebody waits to the very end to get in the freeway? Hard to burge over. We get all indignant, don't we? How come they, they can wait just like I waited? Get all frustrated. How much of the love of God we got in our life? And see, some people, man, they, you guys are just down right there because you guys look at things, oh, that's not that big of a deal. It is a big deal. In the eyes of God, if somebody ever, anything that makes you get out of character, it is a big deal. You need to wake up. You need to stop just coming to church. And playing games because we have to represent him in the way and in the light that he wants us to. And we are bad representations because the little things like this spark us and get us off the hook just like somebody who wasn't even serving God. See, if you tell me about a living God, you better show me there's something different about your life. You better show me in your lifestyle and in your character when I'm watching you that there's something different. If you're complaining just as the same, you're just as sick, just as I am, why am I going to believe and want your God? So we need to learn the love of God. We need to learn his principles. Turn your Bible to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Just because we have freedom don't give us the right to compromise. So many Christians today misinterpret the word freedom. I was at a Christian rap video. These guys look like some straight gangbangers. 
tattoos all over their neck. Started talking about God. You know what came up? Freedom. They said, man, just because you have freedom don't give you the right to sin and come to church the next day and be like, okay, thank you for your grace. Because there's going to be judgment on that kind of attitude. I talked about it Wednesday night. I was like tripping out. I was like, dang, look at these, these, these guys are getting it. They look like they didn't go to church. But man, they were talking about these things, and I was like, wow. They're getting it. And you know what they're going to do? They're going to take that, what they're getting, they're going to take it to the hood. Because me and you won't go there. We came too far. Glory to God. But they're going to take it to the hood, and they're going to, they're going to share these principles with these young men and women in the hood. And they're going to grow up in God and surpass the church that we are today, what God is doing in our lives. Where am I at? 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4. It says, love is patient and kind. How many kind Christians you know? Huh? It's good. They, they kind on Sunday morning. Call them on Monday night. <laughs> See how kind they are. Come to your house uninvited. Say, what's up, brother? They're going to be like, oh, we was about to eat. Can you come back in 15 minutes? Won't even offer you none. You know what I mean? Come back in 15 minutes when I'm done. How about I holler at you tomorrow when it's convenient for me? Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. How much envy, how much people are, are, are go to church on Sunday mornings and say, oh man, my car is better than your car. It is not, is it not arrogant or rude? It does not insist its own way. Oh, that's a good one. It's got to be my way or I ain't doing it. It's got to be the way I want it. It is not irritable. Irritable? Or resentful? It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears what? All things. Believes all things. Hopes all things. Endures all things. So again, how many of us are really walking in love? We need to take a step back sometimes and look at our foundation. Your foundation is important. I don't know much about construction, but I did a little bit. And I know if the foundation's weak, that building ain't going to last long. And in my experience in the Christian church, five, five years is the max for most people. Then they check out. Maybe this might be, still be here, but they checked out here and here. They're just coming because that's what they know to do. They really don't have a passion and a love for God like when they first started coming. The second one, fundamental, that we have to have a firm understanding is, is faith. All kinds of crazy stuff out there. Name it and claim it. Why don't you name your salvation instead of the Mercedes? <laughs> claim your salvation before you start claiming clothes and material things. Because that's what seems, when every time I turn on the TV, most of the church is caught up on being rich. Why don't you be rich in spirit and then work on your bank account? Because you ain't going to be able to take your bank account with you. So they want to believe and have faith in all kinds of material things and possessions, but they don't want to take and have faith over themselves. Take control of themselves. Have faith for their own deliverance. See, we had to have a firm foundation on these things. Come on, many of us get turned away from church. We might not want to admit it, but when they start talking about naming and claiming, yeah, the Lord blessed me with a Mercedes. Who cares? You're a backbiter. You're a murmur and a complainer. In fact, now I'm questioning who blessed you with that Mercedes. 
See, we look at men of God like they're somebody because they come pull up in an $80,000 car. I'm listening to what he says. I'm looking at his character so that I can make a good Christian judgment. Should I follow this man? Because I ain't going to be the blind and falling in a ditch. Like most people, some people think, oh, there must be a man of God. They got big pockets. They're either a man of God or they're not. But I'll make that judgment when I watch them. And if I see the character of what I see in that word coming out of their lives, then I'm going to follow him. See, in the Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, it says, And without faith, it is impossible to please him. And whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he re rewards those who seek him. Too many Christians go back and forth. I believe God today and I don't believe he's real tomorrow. Why? Because of the circumstances in our life. When everything's great, man, we have the utmost faith. We're on top of the world. We're coming in. We're worshiping. We're jumping around. When, when our bank accounts are empty, our kids ain't acting right. Just ripped a new hole in my shoes. Circumstances, everything hits the wall. Got into a car accident. Well, I don't know. Where's God at now? He's right there. Waiting to see how much faith you really got. See, we all get caught up on Job. Shoot, there's modern day Jobs all around us. One thing that I heard is some of the most beautiful stories come from the ugliest situations. And it is through those people keeping faith and being able to endure to the end is what makes the story so beautiful. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for and the conviction of things not seen. Today is just a manifestation of what I believed that God was going to do for me before. I used to get up because I heard a preacher say, he goes, I used to go out and I used to minister to the, the cabbage fields. I did this more when I was single than I was married because it's kind of weird to do in front of your wife. But I used to get up and I used to preach a good sermon to myself in the mirror. I did. I was like, man, I was the Holy Ghost came in and everything. We had a good old service. I was like, glory. I had, so, I had better church by myself than I did with y'all. I was just saying. <laughs> Man, the Holy Spirit came in. I'm preaching. I was like, man, one day I'm going to say that to somebody. But right now, I get to benefit from it. And then when I go to say it to somebody, it never comes out the same. I'm like, dang it. It was good when I did some, said it to myself. This is just a manifestation of what was already done in the Spirit. See, you're healing all these things, your deliverance, your salvation are already done in the spirit. You have to believe it enough to walk in it. But we don't have faith. The Bible said he's going to make me the head and not the tail. So when situations that suck happen, I tell myself I'm the head and not the tail. So however this situation ends up, I'm sorry I said suck them on, but I couldn't say that when I was a kid. I felt bad when I said that. <laughs> when I got into these situations, I had to believe, like, you know what? I'm the head and not the tail. So however this thing ends out, it's going to be for my benefit. It's going to make me stronger. It's going to do something. It's going to bring somebody to the Lord. It's going to do something. It's going to open up a door so that I can minister to somebody. I don't know. I don't like it. It's uncomfortable, but I'm the head and not the tail. And I refuse to be the tail. So too many of us today are settling for the tail. That's right. We're settling for the tail. We're settling to be at the bottom. Why? Because our faith ain't to where God wants it to be. 
Believe in him that is in you is greater than he that is in the world. So that means, that means you have the ability to overcome any situation that comes your way. And when we have that kind of faith, when we have that confidence in God, you better watch out. Because God will turn a nobody into a somebody. He'll make a dope hustler to a hope hustler. He'll turn your life around. One thing about God, he is no respecter of person. Whatever he does for you, whatever he do for me, he'll do for anybody else. You think, well, I'm already old. I'm already had my time. It don't matter. It don't matter. Go back, get you an education. Start going and rolling into school. Do something to help the future in your life. And say, God, bless my walk with you. I'm going to continue to follow you and your precepts in my life. And you're going to bless me and give me the desires of my heart because that's the word says. And you know what? As a matter of fact, along the way, let me hit, share the truth with somebody. Yeah. Yeah. So that they can too obtain salvation in their life. I serve a good God. I serve a mighty God. 33 years old, I've been at the bank for 15 years. I've had a bank, a job, an opportunity, guess what, that God blessed me with. I go online and I look to apply for my job. I would no way, shape, or form ever qualify for what I do. But you know what? A long time ago, I decided, I said, God, I'm going to have faith and I'm going to trust in you. I messed up my life when I was younger. I got kicked out of school. I did all these things wrong, but I'm going to put my faith and trust in you because that's what your word instructs me to do. And I'm going to believe. And no matter what situation comes my way, I'm still going to believe. And you know what? Time and time again, God came through in my life. That's why I cry when I worship him. That's why I get excited when the praise comes on because God did something for me. Some of you can't do that when you worship because God ain't done nothing for you. So don't get mad at me when I can dance. See, I almost got real church because I was dressed up today and the hands was going to go back. And I was about to let it loose. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. But God's done something for me. God done something for you? Yes. I said, God did something for you? Yes. Stand up. Stand up. Give the Lord a praise. God did something for you? God did something for you? Hallelujah, Lord. Glory to your name. See, sometimes you just got to shake it up. Sometimes you just got to stare it up. We don't need no song. We don't need no band. We don't need music. Sometimes we just got to think about what God has done in our lives. Say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know. I just like to shake things up sometimes. You look too tired sitting down. Are you glad you came today? Are you glad he's the King of kings and the Lord of lords? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for your Holy Spirit. We thank you, Lord, for guiding us and lead us in the direction that you would have us to go, Lord. Let your grace and your mercy be upon us as we depart from here today. Continue to reveal yourself to us, Father God. We submit our lives to you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Give the Lord a clap. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can be seated. Thank you for coming. God is awesome. One of my, one of my sisters forwarded uh, my Wednesday night's message to a cousin of mine. And he gave me a call and he said, man, that was awesome. You inspired me. And I was like, whoa, that was cool. So if my cousin sees this, I love you, cuz. I just had to give that shout out. <laughs> Come on, man. God does things with us. I'm telling you. You know, this might have, I said faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. I didn't, you know, there was a time where I couldn't see this happening in my life. 
But thank God, somebody believed enough in me. Invested themselves in me. And if Pastor Mike's walking, I love you, Pastor. He invested in me. But he always pointed me to God. He never pointed me to a law or to a rule. He always pointed me to God. That's what you got to do. You got to just keep your life focused and centered on God. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. I need uh, the announcement.